All right, so we're going into Photoshop. <clears throat> Earlier, before I started the um, recording this, I went out and found a bunch of reference photos for um, our 9mm shelves. Um, sometimes when I have to model something at work, I won't be sure of all the components or exactly what all the components do or dimensions and stuff. So I think it's really good practice to go out and find actual reference photos of what your subject is, how it works, or whatever in general. In this case, um, we're just doing a 9mm shell. It's not that intricate. Um, and I'm pretty sure that all of us know exactly how a bullet works with the, the primer and how the hammer snaps it. It causes, um, you know, it, it burns up the propellant and that with the pressure fires the bullet and the shell, of course, gets expelled and that's what we're doing but we don't need to, we're not animating the shells firing or the, the bullets firing or anything like that we're just doing falling shells so we basically only need a shell as a reference and you don't even really need that to be honest with you right like this would be a good one to use this actually look, kind of looks like a maybe well I guess not it's just a regular 9 millimeter. but um yeah you probably wouldn't need it but it's good practice to do a little bit of research and actually go out and get what you need I grabbed this guy especially because he's crooked and maybe we can cover a couple of things on how to fix this photo up for a good plane <coughs> I'm sorry a good reference panel first thing I would do is double click the layer to unlock it and then I would hit control T on my keyboard so I can go into transform to free transform mode and rotate it I would get it till it looks almost vertical or at least close enough that I can actually go in um, Say my rulers aren't open, so okay. Now I'd hit Control R on my keyboard, and I could drag out guidelines here, the guides, and we could see how close we were. And we're pretty close. Um, that was a good guess, good eyeing it up. Pretty close, not perfect, but you know, um, it's gonna be good enough for what we need. And if you do have these things, uh, if you don't, if you're tired of looking at them, because sometimes I'll get a Photoshop file from like a one of our designers at work or whatever it might be and it's got like <laughs> I shit you not like 50 or 60 of these little irritating blue guidelines and um, a good way to get rid of that right away and it doesn't get rid of it permanently is um, you just hit control H and it stands for hide it hides all the visual extras um, hit control H again on your keyboard to bring it back that also works with us uh, hit L on your keyboard for lasso um, that also will hide that control H again and control H again okay so we have that down deselect and we have this close enough to vertical we're not gonna tamper with it anymore and what I wanna do now to actually permanently get rid of these guides you can go to view and clear guides and I'm gonna get rid of the blue so what, what we wanna do is select by color range this will be easy. Um, you see that this is a fall off field. Um, the lower the number, the more precise it will have to be to that blue that I selected by clicking on the image. Uh, you can see how it works. And I'm pretty sure you already know. It's a very simple feature. Um, all the way up to the top. Now, you don't want to do this because it will. Well, you usually don't want to do it because there's going to be some blues hidden inside this shell that you want to keep. So. Instead of out of 200 from 0 to 200, I mean, we can make it pretty close. Let's go 175. Hit enter, that selects that, and you can hit Q on your keyboard to preview that. It looks good, your shell's pretty preserved, only the blue will go. Hit Q again to get out of quick mask mode. And um, I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard, and our blue is gone, or at least appears to be gone, and is gone enough for what we need. I hit E on my keyboard to bring up the eraser just to get rid of these uh, these uh, the black outlining strips that were on that. And I'm going to hit C on my keyboard for uh, uh, the crop tool. That's what it's called. And again, you want to get close to this. You don't have to be on top of it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. 
get it kind of close. Double click on the middle, or you can hit enter on your keyboard. Now I'm going to hit control N on my keyboard to bring up new. 500 by 500 will be sufficient. How do we know it will be sufficient? Because if we go to our image here, you can hold down alt control I, and it will give us the dimensions of our current photo. So we see it's only 122 by 221. Therefore, if we hit Control N for new, 500 by 500 will definitely encompass the whole thing and leave us room. Now, the reason I'm doing this next step is to make it an, easy, an even 500 by 500 pixels. So otherwise, I have to go through one extra step, and it's not even a big deal. It's just I'm a little lazy, and I'm stuck in my lazy man ways via my keyboard for the move tool. And I'm just going to drag that onto here. Again, I'm going to bring up guides. There's a guide, and I'm just find, trying to find the center point of the background. I had this for now. And I'm going to move my bullet into the center. Bring this back up. Okay, I'm going to hide the guides. Control H. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, shift F5, foreground color fill. It fills your foreground color, that's obvious. <laughs> Wrong layer. Make sure it's your background layer. Shift, or, yeah, Shift F5. So now we basically have our outline of the show. Um, again, we could have cheated and just brought up. And just used something that already had an outline. Uh, I'm not going to save this. I'm not going to be using that again. I mean, we could just use this as a reference photo. But again, it's good practice to learn how to set these kind of things up. Yeah, we could easily use this, and it's it's good to have this kind of stuff or be able to find this kind of stuff because you get actual dimensions. Like if they want to make it like scale one to world proportions, you know, uh, it will help control your gravity settings and everything else. Uh, for that, we're not really worried about this because we want to make this kind of like a stylized bullet shell or bullet casing dropping just to make it fun and more interesting to the eye. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to look at my bullet. I'm going to see on my keyboard for crop again. I just want to take this to the edges to make sure it stays square. That's a one-to-one -one pixel aspect ratio. Just shrink it down, see our bullet still isn't completely lined up. Hit enter V on the keyboard. Make sure our bullet layer is selected. I'm just going to move it up just a little bit. And that is what we're going to use. I'm going to hit uh, Control S for save. Um, I already have a version of it saved here. I oh, will fuck it. I'll fill this in. T U T for tutorial underscore reference. And Control S or Control Shift S, and then we'll save it out as a JPEG also. And if we wanted to, we could do different things with that. We could um, hide the background and save it as a PNG file, so we'll save the transparency, whatever. But again, we're not going to do that. We already have it saved as a JPEG. And um, join me back here in one minute. This ends the Photoshop portion of the tutorial. It's like I said, it's real quick, it's easy. And when I come back we'll be we'll be inside Studio Max. So see you then.